welcome back guys we are here with kyler green from kcg props and art thank you so much for joining us anytime i'm really happy to have you here uh, kyler we had you on the show in season one yeah we did yeah. oh my god so it's good to have you back again man. yeah it's been a while it has been it has see, been the set has not changed all that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh so but you've been busy obviously yeah, yeah. my god uh so what are you into now um Building sets, last year I was doing the, the groups. Um, this year I kind of went back again to another passion, collecting toys, and uh, decided to start building sets for them, and little props as well to, to make them stand out more. That's phenomenal. And what inspired you to do that? Uh, a big collection, really. <laughs> um, a place to put your stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've got shelves, and they're just littered with everything. Sometimes stuff is falling over, so it's not looking very nice. So having things like this kind of motivate me to keep stuff standing. Nice. Yeah, you nice. talked about toy commercials, too, and how... Uh... Yeah, I mean, every commercial you see with the toy in it, it's got a big set in the background, and you don't get that. It's hard to find those, so these kind of uh, fill that gap. Accentuate the, accentuate the toys themselves. Yeah. yeah, well, I think it adds a, a lot of value just in terms of like showing the toys in their natural element, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's fascinating too because you tell me this that you have a lot of toys, you want to make them look good. Your apartment looks look amazing. Just yeah. a line yeah. of toys <laughs> and sets for the toys featuring a couch, as I put it, <laughs> your apartment is. So, why don't you tell us about the process of making uh, these artistic additions to your, your toy collection? Um, well, uh, I use a lot of just uh, random materials, mostly from hardware stores. So, so uh, a lot of the sets start with polystyrene foam, and I'll just draw on this whatever I want the building, um, carve it up with an X Acto knife, and uh, paint it up after. Uh, with something like this to get the rock texture, I used a spray foam insulation. Oh my God, that's uh, quite a great so idea. Mm -hmm. Put that on, rubbed it down by hand just so it didn't expand too much, and then carved up where I needed to just to get that grainy look. And then I put some uh, spray paint on it that had the sand texture as well just to give it a bit more uh, realistic look. How long does something like that take you? Um, this was one of my first sets. This one probably took about uh, maybe eight hours. Yeah. Um, especially like I added a lot of little grass details and went yeah. in with a uh, black dry brushing just to get some stuff to pop out. Um, but I've, I've gotten quite a bit quicker at it and learned some new tricks to, yeah. to make everything hold better and, and stand out more too. And you also, it's not just the set that you've built, you actually do custom paint jobs on the on some toys and things like that too. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, I mean, a lot of toys don't come fully painted like you'd see them in the movies or, or stuff like <laughs> that. So uh, I just, I, w I want them to look show accurate, so yep. I paint them up. And now in this piece here, you talked about how you tooled the brick yourself, but I also see sort of a grainy feel for the cement here. How do you do that? Um, I look for anything around the house that'll help. The grainy texture was done with uh, just sandpaper. I laid sandpaper on top and just hit it with my fist to get all these little bumps and stuff. Uh, cracks. Crap you can get behind yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's who we hitting <laughs> next time. <laughs> how we hit things to look good. <laughs> Featuring Gallery. Uh, the cracks using toothpicks, uh, pretty much anything I could find around the house, and then I just walk the aisles of hardware stores and think, like, what could I use that for? Can I do something with that or not? And yeah. it's amazing. What I like about you actually have a, a YouTube channel, and what I like when I'm watching some of these videos, on the, we'll put the link up so you guys can take a look at this, is you actually go through the process of a lot of this, and it's, it's really fascinating. It makes me want to do some of this stuff. You know, try it out. You know, yeah. build a set. I, too, want to hit foam now. <laughs> I do. I do. But also, what's interesting about Kyler is that it's not his only hobby. He only has a, he has a passion for Power Rangers toys, and I've also seen him as the Red Ranger. That's true. Actually, yeah. as cosplay yes. creator. Yes, you were yeah. the Red Ranger at the uh, Graphics Con last year. Yep. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yep. So that was another thing with uh, the name change we've got going for props and art. The shield uh, was built by myself. The power sword that I had, uh, the belt. Um, I bought the suit online, and everything else was handmade. And the helmet was the the legacy version of the Power Ranger helmet. Oh, that's so, amazing. So, um, would you say uh, Power Rangers uh, has been a big influence? Or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Why do you think you'd, uh, that you're drawn to uh, shows like Power Rangers? Um, Power Rangers itself is, is really cheesy, and I think that's, <laughs> it, it, it really is, but I think that's the one thing that, that makes it so good. Um, all the fight scenes are, are over the top. The, yeah. uh, they, they have really scenes. funny weapons and like finishing attack moves. Uh, 
the Japanese version is uh, very, very different than what we see. So it's, it's really cool sometimes to also transfer back and forth and check out uh, a Japanese version of the show opposed to the American because you get more story. And That's fantastic. Now let's talk about this piece here too, yeah. though. I mean, obviously this is a Ninja Turtle inspired piece. Uh, how'd you why, what how'd you go about creating this? Um, that uh, that was kind of one of the first foam builds. Um, I've always loved Ninja Turtles. They're always in alleyways. Uh, figured Mikey's probably got a can of spray paint. Nice. So nice. Added the graffiti there. Classic and tagger. <laughs> Mikey, yeah. sir. Public, public mess. <laughs> What's great about this, I love this, you put magnets into the walls too. Yeah. So that you can actually take this wall, take these walls out. And, well, I'm not going to do it, but <laughs> <laughs> they come apart and put together just super easy. Yeah, yeah well that, that makes it easier for shipping and also for anybody who's got them. If they don't have a place to set them up right away or they're rearranging things, it gives you a place you can tear it down, put yeah. it away for a bit without worrying about damaging it. Yeah, exactly. Now, I'm not artistic like you guys, so I see this stuff and, and I, I, I want it, but for guys who are artistic like yourselves, how do you, where would you send someone to get advice on how to make this themselves? Um, well, I, on my YouTube channel, I do how-tos now, mm -hmm. so you can definitely check out my YouTube channel, but uh, YouTube is filled with awesome creators who, who do stuff like this, and it's, it's uh, really good to just go on there to get ideas and, and see what else you can find. Wow. Where, where, that's kind of where you got your start, basically looking at yep. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I've always been into miniatures, so the, I got into this by watching a lot of Warhammer uh, oh, gaming videos nice, to see how nice. they build their sets and some of some of the the props they use for the the gaming tables. So you built the gaming table, or started to build things with the gaming table you always wanted, and then you got into yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I, I I tried to build the gaming table. I always wanted, and I just had like a box of Fruit Loops. <laughs> <laughs> it was my terrain for Warhammer. But you can't say it was all about 40k. <laughs> <laughs> you need that true lens. That's a props to anyone who actually does that. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about how this expresses itself through your Etsy store. Like, what do you guys? What, what do you put on there? Um. Anything that uh, that we've been making now, uh, the Dino Charge Energems from the Power Ranger season, uh, mm -hmm. they've been going really well. Uh, I've sold those starting in November and literally flying off the Etsy store as fast as I put them up. Okay. Um, you'll also find the toy sets. Um, in the future, you'll see more props up there. And that's fantastic. So do you? Now that's one thing I like to talk about is props too, because you did say you made. Props for your Red Ranger cosplay. Yeah. Uh, what other props are you looking to yourself expand into? Uh, anything really, like armor. I've uh, been working on an Iron Man helmet, so stuff That's like that. And it's it's all foam, so I mean it's all stuff that you can easily find around. I mean Dollarama sells uh, some of the foam that a lot of cosplayers use now. So oh, opposed right. to going to a Canadian Tire spending twenty thirty dollars on a Big Mac, you can go to Dollarama now and find a lot of the stuff you need. So. It's, it's all about uh, browsing aisles. Like the, I'm out almost every day looking through <laughs> aisles. Like what, what can I take home and make something with? So That is really cool. So you're saying that you don't need to be super rich to, to make something super cool? No, no, definitely not. You can look around your house for, for stuff again. Like this, this I found because my dad had extra. So yeah. started off, okay, well, uh, he's got extra. I'm going to see what I can do with it. And go from there the spray foam the same thing we were doing insulation in the house had some extra cans around so grab that but I mean uh, well, it looks it, it, it's weird how it looks like it looks like yeah. look it looks like rocks absolutely you know absolutely. like it, it definitely brings that touch of realism to your toy set that you might not be looking for yeah so. for sure yeah well, Kyler, thank you so much for being on the show and, and sharing this with us. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to see more from Kyler, check out his YouTube channel, of course, and uh, stay with us for more Talk Nerdy. <laughs> Talk Nerdy is proudly supported by Great Canadian Games and Hobbies, located at 1410 LaSalle Boulevard, and Comics North and Hidden Level Games, located at 106 Elm Street.